Have you ever been in a situation where you need to run Apache Spark code, but you don't want to manage the underlying resources? Then Amazon Athena's Spark Engine could be the solution for you. Amazon Athena's Spark Engine allows you to submit Spark code in the form of notebooks without having to manage any of the underlying resources. It's fully serverless and will scale to meet your compute demands. There are a list of limitations currently, which I'll supply in the link down below because these are ever changing. But don't worry, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can set up Amazon Athena's Spark Engine from scratch and get going with code in a notebook. As always, all the resources are made available for free that I use in this tutorial, link to the GitHub below. With that being said, I'd really appreciate a like and subscribe to the channel because it helps me out. And now let's jump onto the console and get on with the tutorial. Okay, folks, that's me logged into the AWS console. For this entire tutorial, as I pointed out at the start, I have created the GitHub that has all the resources we need, including the data and the CloudFormation template that's going to do some setup work for us. That setup work that we're going to carry out in a little second is in the setup section of the README. It's going to create the S3 bucket, the Glue database, and the customer's table in the Glue database that we're going to use throughout this tutorial to run our Apache Spark jobs in Athena. So the easiest thing to do is just to go to code on the right hand side and then I download as a zip so I have it locally. You can see that that's now downloaded. I'm going to double click that download and it will open up actually on my other screen. So I'll drag that across. And as you can see, I have the files now locally ready to go. So I have the data file that has customers in it right there. I have that YAML file of cloud formation that's gonna be needed to do the setup work for us. And we have the readme. I will be working off the readme on the web page the entire time. So back on to the management console and the first place we want to go is CloudFormation. I should point out that this uh, Apache Spark running in Amazon Athena isn't available in every region yet. So I'm running out of North Virginia for this demo. So if you want to do the same as me, run out of North Virginia. I am going to type in CloudFormation because the first thing we need to do is that setup work. I'm going to click into the CloudFormation service by AWS. I am going to create a new stack with existing or with new resources, sorry. Uh, template is ready. I want to upload that template and I want to hit choose. I want to go out into my um, downloaded file, which is called Athena Spark for me uh, here. Then I want to go to that YAML that we downloaded. So I'm going to click OK on the YAML. I'm going to click next. It's going to ask us a name for the stack. So I'm going to call this um, tutorial tutorial hyphen Apache hyphen spar hyphen Athena you can call it anything you want this is the name for an s3 bucket that we're going to create so we can run those uh, spark jobs and PySpark spark jobs from Athena I'm going to call this uh, tutorial tutorial uh, Athena spark Johnny Shivers. Now, remember, your bucket has to be unique in the entirety of AWS. So I usually use my name um, to make that unique. I'm going to hit next. I am role. I'm going to leave all this as blank. I'm going to use my permissions that I'm logged in as. I advise you to do the same. Um, I have admin permissions, obviously, to make this create. Okay, so this is off and running. This will take a few minutes in total. And what it's doing, as I pointed out earlier, if I just go to the setup work section, you'll see that we're running the cloud formation template. This will create the S3 bucket, the glue database, and the customer's table where the data will reside. Uh, you just want to keep refreshing uh, on both sides until this goes completely green and it will say created complete in total. I'm just going to pause the video here and then we can pick it up once everything is green and we can upload the data to that S3 bucket. Okay, after about 60 seconds, if you just keep hitting these refresh buttons, you'll see that everything goes green and it's completed. The next thing you need to do is go to this output section, sorry, this resource section. And what we're looking for is the name of the S3 bucket. So down here, you can see that the S3 bucket exists. I want you to click that and it's going to take us to that S3 bucket. Next thing we need to do is actually upload some data that we're going to use. So if you go upload and you go add folder, not add files, you click into that data folder, click into customers, highlight the customers folder and click OK. Do you want to upload the file? 
yes I do and I want to upload. This will take a few seconds, nothing more than that. There's not very much data, it's just for the purpose of this demo. You then want to hit close and as you can see inside the bucket that the cloud formation template just created we have a folder called customers and if I click in there we have a customers.csv. That data is uh, coming from the GitHub and if you take a look at the data section you can see what that data actually looks like. I've given a schema and some sample data so you can see we have customer ID, then we have first name, last name and full name. It's as simple as that, it's just to show um, data for the purpose of this demo. That's the end of the setup work. What we need to do next is jump back onto the console and go to Athena. Finally, we're going to Athena. So I just type it in at the top again, Athena, and click into it. Okay, once on the Amazon Athena console, you want to go to the left-hand side and this little hamburger menu. You want to go work groups and you want to go create work group. You want to give this work group a name, so I'm going to call this Athena Spark. You then want to click Apache Spark. We don't want the example notebook, we're okay for that. I am configuration, you want to create a service rule. You want it to be owned by Amazon Athena. You want to go to results and you want to say, choose an existing S3 location. You want to go browse, you want to click the bucket that we created. So I'm just going to type in my name and we want to click on tutorial Athena Spark Johnny Chivers. Then you want to hit forward slash and then you want to put in the word results. And this is where our results will be stored. Leave everything else as default. Other settings as default and we don't need tags. Create work group. Okay, work group is now created. Let's go into our notebook explorer. Let's select the work group that we just created from the right hand side and let's say create notebook. I'm going to call this Athena Spark Demo. Okay. One last thing we need to do is actually give some permissions to the role that was automatically created when we created this work group two seconds ago. So go to IAM, open into a new tab, go to rules, it's thinking about it, type in Athena, and you should have an execution rule called Spark. So it will say AWS Athena Spark execution rule hyphen and then some letters. There should only be one of this is the first time you've done it, the same as me. You want to click into that and you want to go add permissions, attach policy. You want to type in glue and enter. And we want to go down to these manage policies here. So I'm going to add this one, uh, service notebook rule. I'm going to add the glue service rule. I'm going to add full console access as well. And I am going to leave it at that. So those three, service notebook rule, service rule, and glue console full access. I want to hit attach policies. A policies have been attached to role. This gives us... Um, this gives permissions for us to then carry out the work we need inside Amazon Athena. Back into Athena, that should be started. I'm going to hit this X down. We then want to jump onto the GitHub, which I'm going to bring across to make this simpler. And the first thing we want to do is show the databases. So if you remember when we were on the Glue console two seconds ago, inside databases, I have four. You may have less. Uh, at least two, usually the default will be there. And then the one that we're going to work from is this Athena Spark tutorial. Uh, again, this isn't a demo on how uh, Spark works. Um, this is actually just to show you how Athena works with uh, Spark jobs. So to show you what I did there, actually, I just copied that from GitHub and then I pasted it in. So that's what I did, copied and paste and run. This will go off now and show us databases from the Glue data catalog. I have four, you should have two at a minimum. You can see that there's the Athena Spark tutorial and the default. So now we're using Spark to access our Glue data catalog. It's going to jump back into that Glue data catalog, click in, and you'll see that that table exists there. And it's this table that we're going to do the remainder of the tutorial with. So in step number two, you can see that I am going to select some data from that customers table, which is sitting out in Glue with the data on S3. Again, reiterate this, not a Spark tutorial. There is one of those already on the channel. Um, as you can see, what I've done here is qualify the database, which is the Athena Spark tutorial DB, this one here, and then the customers table. We're selecting from it, and I want to show 50 rows. So once you've got that in, you just have to hit run to run the cell. We don't need to run the other one again, so highlight the cell and hit run. This will take a few seconds. It'll run off, create the Spark job. This is completely serverless. Go to the Glue Data Catalog, look at where the data is in S3, read the data, and then print it out for me on screen. So you can see there that I'm only showing the top 50 rows. Perfect. 
back on to the uh, GitHub. Next thing I wanted to show you is how to print the schema. Again, this is just demo Spark code. There's nothing particularly in depth or tricky about this. Uh, this is just to show how it works with Athena. So again, copy and paste it in. It runs off, prints the schema from the Glue Data Catalog, and you can see that that is my schema there. Customer ID, first name, last name, and full name. And then finally, what I wanted to just do is show how to select one field. So in this, I'm just selecting first name from that Athena DB, Athena Spark Tutorial DB dot customers, back in, last cell, and then you just want to run that. And then it goes off, searches for all the first names using the Glue Data Catalog, running that Spark job, but this time on Athena. And then eventually it will show me the top 50 rows of first name only. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover. It's just as a starter, how to set up that work group, how to run your Apache Spark workloads. What we need to need do now before we sign off is um, actually delete everything so it doesn't cost us any money. So what you want to do is go up here and you want to say terminate the session. That's the first thing. So that's the session terminated. It's thinking about it. It's thinking about it. It's thought about it. Then you want to go to Notebook Explorer. You want to highlight the notebook that we were working in and make sure you're in the work group if you can't find it and then hit delete. Then it says, do you want to delete this notebook? The answer is always yes. So type in the name. Notebook is gone. You want to go down the work groups. You want to highlight the work group and you want to say delete then. You have to do it in this order um, because there's dependencies on the delete. So that's all of that then deleted. And then finally, if you go back into the CloudFormation uh, console, which I appear to have um, minimized. So I just want Cloud type that in wrong, cloud formation, click on to it, loading, loading, loading. It's the Apache Spark one that we want to go into and you want to go to delete stack and this will delete all the resources that we created. So that's everything from me guys uh, for this tutorial. Hopefully you find it interesting. Please like and subscribe to the channel because it really helps me out. Um, and if you haven't checked out already, there is the website johnnychivers.co.uk where I make all this information for free. And until next time, folks, thanks for watching.